a little different than a trainer. We're gonna we're really revamping on how we can uh, how we can associate with the dogs, training training dog care staff instead of training our dogs. Um, leveraging the knowledge I have to the other humans is the only way to really enrich the, the lives of these dogs without one person being here. So the first thing we should see here is how dogs perceive you and how they interact as a pack. So the dogs that ran up to you are more curious dogs for one and a little bit excited. There's a couple dogs over there all by themselves. Those are the more insecure dogs. So respecting you instantly, giving you space, but you're not going to get given trust. Okay, so most likely kind of the dog you have. Yeah. All right. Now what can happen though is one of these little females, like this one right here. If I try and grab her, we're not there yet. She doesn't. She doesn't know me as much. So what can happen with a dog that's that level of anxious or insecure is once they bond with one person, they can then defend that one person. And the biggest thing that I'm noticing here is the biggest. The biggest. Um, turning point for her going from a reactive, insecure dog to a social, confident dog is the nose. So when she was barking, notice it was all visual, all looking at that thing. As she creeps closer, you're going to start seeing her use her nose. So a dog that is looking at a situation with their eyes is either, nine times out of ten, it's either going to be excited, nervous, aggressive. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a more heightened state. A dog that is smelling is, is almost always a dog that's going to be social. It's going to be trustworthy. The, the smelling and the walking, it's um, a lot of times the insecure dogs, they don't, want to, they don't want to move too fast because they become a target. Mm -hmm. The reality is there's a lot of dogs out there that are extremely fearful that they just never saw the world. They were born um, prefer, possibly with a, a mother who was an already anxious dog, fearful dog, was born and absorbed all of the perspective of a mom who's fearful and doesn't go anywhere, doesn't see the world. So once a dog becomes a year old and hasn't seen the world, their perspective is skewed. And so um, it's something that, there's a lot of dogs out there like this that really have never had a negative experience with a human other than the fact that they don't know necessarily what humans are. And what generally determines the behavior or the personality of a dog from birth is two things. Innate confidence level is the dog born insecure or confident and innate energy level. Was the dog born a high energy dog? Was it born a low energy dog? So we're talking about trust. So what you're looking for is to develop trust with him in public. So he trusts you right now in the house and then we go outside he goes, Ooh, it's a big bad place. And you go, no, it's cool. I'll hang out here with you until you feel better about moving forward. Right. Okay. So, following through, saying, oh, you don't want to go over there. Okay, I'm not going to drag you. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to lose trust, but I'm going to follow through. Maintain my respect, okay? The, the leash in the right position in my hand, and then he does all the work. So if he goes too far, he creates the tension. And when he backs up, it becomes relaxed. And once again, this becomes an exercise of not just physical, but also mental. So the fact that I'm giving a boundary, he's telling him where to walk, he's draining physical energy, and at the same time, he's using mental power. Both of those things combined is what makes a dog relax. Okay? At the same time, I'm the leader. So I become stronger, and my relationship with him, in all intended purposes, becomes easier. See that when my arm's totally relaxed, he has leash, but he doesn't have an excess amount of leash. And what that does is I, can, I don't have to watch him. I can look ahead, I can see where I'm walking, I can look down the road, and I can feel when he moves out of position. Right? And that's what we're feeding off of. And what we do is we walk a dog until that goes away. Okay? And, and, and for me, what it's supposed to be like is, this is a shelter dog, he does not get walked an adequate amount at this time right now. So this is kind of a detox. He wants to move a lot faster. Some dogs will give a bike ride first too and then go on the walk. He wants to move a little faster, so that moving back and forth, that's the kind of a detox process. So for me, after that goes away, that's when our real walk begins, right? That's when he's actually seeing the world in a healthy perspective, and we want to have that last as long as possible, right? And for, for Stimpy right now, 
the name of the game is 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 experience is is how much how many hours can we get practicing this and that and just and keep going with it you know from one person gaining his trust a hundred percent I can then take him into situations that he might not trust on his own but he can trust through me and I can I can exaggerate and speed up his rehabilitation much quicker once I have the relationship